Ed Maris, ladies and gentlemen. Howdy. Magical accordion res restoration. Well, this was an interesting restoration because it was completely glued together. And there was it was not clear how it was going to come apart in order to be restored. Uh, so the first thing to do is to get the bellows off the, the treble box and the bass box. The bellows at some point had been glued on because it leaked so much air that uh, that was the kind of the emergency solution was to glue the bellows right to the box. And I found that with some uh, uh, a, a soldering soldering gun for heat and some hot water and a pallet knife, I could get in there and, and loosen up the joint, the glue joint. And then with a couple of lucky hits with a hammer and a putty knife, it started to free up so that the... Uh, I started having a little bit of movement in there, and I finally got the treble box off. And the base box was no problem. That hadn't been glued on. As a matter of fact, the gasket on the base was still pretty good. So we got them separated, and then I discovered that the bellows was pretty shot. Although the corners are all good, uh, there were big tears in the first five bellows folds. And because we're not doing a, a complete... Uh, aesthetic restoration here. We're, we're not trying to make this look like a new accordion and we wanted to save as much as we could for the big job which was all the reed work and the tuning which was very substantial. Uh, I just repaired the these bellows folds with some cardboard and some l cardboard to line them. Uh, bellows are made out of cardboard and uh, and some tape so that we had tight bellows. Uh, one thing Jerry and I noticed early on was that this end of the keyboard was all loose. The whole thing was flopping around, and uh, the keyboard is a, the, the keyboard bod the key the key bed rather this actual wooden frame here that surrounds the keys had become separated from the body of the accordion because the brass brace. That actually attached it, it snapped right off. It had just there. There was a, a screw hole that attached that brass uh, strap to the key bed, and it, it had cracked right through that screw hole. So it was just flopping around there. So you can't see it, but I made a new brass fastening plate that's mounted inside of here. So now we had the basic frame back together. Keyboard was in really rough shape. The action was all over the place. Keys were very out of level. Uh, so the keyboard all came apart, the sharps and the naturals. And I ended up eventually, although I tried not to have to do this, I, I tried to keep the original pads on the instrument. Uh, and, and the thickness of the pads on the instrument determined the action depth. And the depth was very, very deep on the action. And this is a very different feeling action now than it was originally. So we both marveled at how Jerome Sr. played this instrument as well as he played it with that extraordinary deep action. It was like a piano action. Uh, I finally realized uh, after going uh, kind of through the whole reed process actually that we really needed to replace the valve pads on at least the naturals. They had been replaced once already. They'd not been, whoever had done it had not done a particularly good job. They didn't seal well. They were an inferior uh, type of material. So I replaced all the valve pads on the naturals and I dressed and cleaned the valve pads on the, on the sharps. And that really helped a lot to hold more air in, to even up the action. And then I could bend the key rods and get a nice flat, straight, uh, key line here. So now it feels pretty good. Yeah, it's still quite deep for a modern instrument. A modern instrument is about a millimeter less deep than this, but it works good and it seals relatively well. Instrument still uses a lot of air and that's kind of the nature of the beast. Uh, the big job was the reed work and uh, all the reeds had to come off the blocks 
The blocks all had to be cleaned. The reeds all had to be cleaned. Most of the inside reed skins were in good enough shape to, to restore them. And I did that because we just cannot get the quality of leather anymore that was used in these instruments. The leather is so beautiful. I wish I had a piece of it right here to show you, but uh, mm. it's all inside the box. Very thick, supple, beautiful leather. Um, the stuff today is nothing like that. So I saved as much of the leather as possible and cleaned it and reconditioned it and tensioned it and put it back on and then replaced leathers that uh, were missing. Um, and then all the, so each, each individual little reed plate and just for an example, I can show you quickly what a reed plate looks like. These are rusty set of reeds. Each one of these plates has a reed on each side, outside reed and then the inside reed in there. And in general, that vent, as we call it, is covered by a piece of leather. This is the leather skin. And these are very nice leathers too, on a very old instrument, but unfortunately it was water damaged and all the reeds corroded. So each one of these plates has to come off, be cleaned, the skin addressed, either replaced or restored and then wax back on with a blend of beeswax and pine rosin, which uh, raises the melting point of the beeswax so that it's more stable, and it also makes it aggressively tacky so it really sticks, and as the wax dries, it pulls that reed, aluminum reed plate right down onto the wooden block and holds it like blind death. That's what we want. We want an intimate connection between that aluminum reed plate and the block, which is then intimately connected to the foundation plate so that the vibrations from this little tiny reed, you know, which sounds like this, end up sounding like, whoops, or This is an innovative, I think Jerry Senior came up with this. This is an innovative, one of a kind bellow strap, never seen before, which has snaps on both ends. This is the original bellow strap, which has just a snap on one end. Now, how many reeds are in this instrument, Ed? Do you know? Yeah, approximately. This is a four reed accordion, so that means there's four sets of reeds in the bass, in the treble, and there's five sets of reeds in the bass. So that would be a total of about 400 individual reeds, or 200 reed plates. So when you tune an accordion, all 400 of those reeds need attention. Sometimes you can get away with doing less. But an accordion like this, where everything was at a way past a service interval, uh, everything needed, needed help. And also, an accordion is tuned like any keyboard instrument to equal temperament, and we won't get into that, but equal temperament is a tuning system which was devised in, you know, toward the end of uh, the classical period, uh, Bach, experimented with different kinds of temperaments and and the uh, the eventual solution after his time uh, was something called equal temperament which essentially means that you can play in all 12 keys of a keyboard instrument and it sounds okay not perfect but okay and we've gotten used to that sound what it actually means is that you can play in all 12 keys equally out of tune but, <laughs> so equal temperament, when you change one thing, everything changes. All the relationships change. If you change the pitch of one note, all the relationships change. So uh, when you retune an instrument, you really have to, uh, you really have to fine tune each read. <clears throat> so then the process is to, uh, is to set temperament bearings and go through the instrument and tune it. 
this is an interesting accordion from another standpoint, and, and that's that the reed setup is uh, a typical uh, Italian continental uh, tremolo, the continental sometimes called a musette, which we don't see much in the United States. We're, we're used to, uh, as far as accordions go, we're used to hearing two reed musettes. So there's two sets of middle reeds, and those reeds are tuned a little bit out of phase with each other, which gives kind of a warble or a tremolo effect, right? This instrument has three sets of middle reeds. So the center set is tuned to whatever the pitch is for the instrument. Uh, one set is tuned a little bit flat, and the other set is tuned a little bit sharp. And it can be symmetrical, flat, sharp, or it can be asymmetrical. This one is symmetrical. And that gives a particular kind of very mobile kind of warbling sound. As opposed to a straight song. And there's also a bass reed, a bassoon reed. Now tell us about this uh, configuration, because this was totally... Yeah. You had to yeah. get somebody to fabricate that for you yeah actually I, we, we could repair what was there okay <clears throat> uh, this accordion was originally made in those those sounds that I made are because I was ganging up different sets of reeds together to play together to give a certain kind of sound and this is a single reed and then three three metal reeds and a bass reed okay so there's the four sets of reeds originally this right here this black strip was a shift and this probably shifted between the musette sound without the bass and add the bass. And I don't know why this was changed, but for some reason it was it didn't work or it failed uh, or it was uh, or didn't work well enough. For some reason it was changed, and this other system was built. Uh, in a very original, unique way, and added to the instrument to take the place of this. Um, it does give more flexibility, and it was, however, uh, put together with solder. The, the, moving, um, the moving metal parts in here, which are brass and steel, were nicely made, but they were joined together with soft solder, and there wasn't enough bearing area on one of the levers, on, on, the, on, on the lever that's on each one of these uh, linkages. There wasn't enough bearing area there to really let the solder, uh, to make a strong enough joint, enough solder to make a strong enough joint. And it eventually failed, and these didn't work. So you couldn't shift the accordion. And uh, I have a friend who's a very good metal worker and a troubleshooter and a very creative guy and he lives in Florida in the winter and comes up here in the summer and so I waited for him to come and get his recommendation you know and he came over here one night and we had this all apart and he looked at it and said no you know uh, you know uh, this thing's got to pull some load because the way these ships work is there's a aluminum strip inside the bottom of the reed block slides back and forth with holes in it and when that strip is in position A the sound holes are open and the reeds play. And when it's in position B, the sound holes are closed and the, it doesn't play. So that thing has to slide back and forth. And there's quite a bit of friction on that. So these linkages really have to pull, uh, you know, a, a little bit of a load. It's got to be a strong joint. That joint that failed, it's got to be a strong joint. And solder obviously is not going to work. So I think we're going to have to braze it. And he said, well, wait just a minute. Before we braze anything, here's something you should try. Loctite. You gotta be kidding me. He says, no, you wouldn't believe the stuff that I fixed with Loctite. 
All right, so I took his word for it, and then I did more research, and I found out that Loctite makes about 100 products in different strengths. And some of them are thread lockers, some of them are bearing retainers, some of them are sleeve retainers. And uh, damn if it didn't work. I got Loctite 638, a sleeve and bearing retainer, cleaned out that joint in there, squirted the Loctite in, waited very patiently for 72 hours. And it's, we could move this table saw away. <laughs> So, we were able to fix this thing, which is just, I'm so fortunate that that worked. So now we have shifts that work. Never worked before. This accordion hasn't been played for over 60 years. Yeah. And, uh. So, yeah, it's it's back. It's back. It's, it's talking again. It's talking again. <laughs> it, it has, you know, it has its own characteristics. It, it was a, uh. It was an early instrument, I would say mid-30s, late-40s, probably. So it lacked some of the refinement of, of later accordions, of course. The accordion was in constant re uh, evolution during this period of time, very rapid evolution, because by 1947, uh, the instrument had changed incredibly in terms of the way the boxes were built and the mechanics, especially, and the way the actions were made. Uh, the materials used for uh, the way the, the way the pads were made, and actually the way the reeds were made too. Many things changed. These are still very nice quality reeds, mm. and it's tuned at 440. A440 being the the U.S. default pitch, also called concert pitch, 440 cycles per second on the middle A of the piano. Uh, Italian instruments are universally made at A442 because the Italians aren't about to be told what pitch their recording should be by anybody. Also, European pitch tends to be higher than American pitch. So accordions are generally made at 442. This is a 440 accordion, and I think it was retuned when mm. your dad had it. I think he had somebody tune it. Because mm. he ran into the same problem that we all do that play the accordion in ensembles. Nobody wants to tune up. And if you have horn players, it's very difficult for them sometimes to get high enough. String players, no problem. Piano, if you're going to play with a pianist, <laughs> you're going to be out of tune. So, uh, All right, Ed, thanks very much. Ed Maris, ladies and gentlemen. You bet.